hello. So let me just change to screen. Um, do what I need to do here. All right. So I am now recording. So anyone who's catching this replay, you'll see that there's actually no one in the queue because I did the whole training and didn't record it. So I'm back doing the training again. So then you get the recording um, tomorrow. And I poured myself a glass of wine um, because I was a little frustrated with myself. Um, but anyway, here we are now. Hello, <laughs> my name is Lauren. Thanks so much for coming on to this masterclass. Um, so tonight I'm going to go through female sexual pleasure. At the end, I'm just going to talk to you about uh, the Pleasure Portal, which is my new um, female um, female group. Uh, it's a sacred container. So um, yeah, let's get stuck in. Okay, so sex education for females. So chances are your sex education was pretty underwhelming and you were left to either learn from porn, asking your friends or learning through experimentation. In its basicness, sex is a life. We are created from it and yet we are taught to fear it. It is glorified in the media and on advertising billboards and demonized in schools and churches. We are taught the basic functionality, sex in vagina equals baby. Yet we are not taught about pleasure, self-pleasure, that sex can be a healing modality. And when we learn to transmute our energy, sex can become a beautiful way to connect to source and the divine. All of this would take a lot longer than I have for you to master. However, what I want is to empower you and increase your knowledge around women's bodies, around our bodies and of sex in general and how you can be an epic lover. So the first diagram here, I have a diagram of us, our, our bodies. Uh, so what I want to really point out here is that a female body is basically a minefield of erogenous zones, so of pleasure points. So it is super important that we know, A, how what we like sexually, but B, that we like how our body wants, or we know how we like our body to be touched. Like literally from our head to our toes, there are little um, bits on our body that will create sensations of pleasure. And Everyone is different. And that's probably if you take one thing away from tonight, ladies, is that everybody is different. Every woman is different. So what you like is going to be different to what your girlfriend likes, to what your partner's ex-girlfriend is going to like. So don't ever let someone say, oh, but my ex-girlfriend used to love this and shame you for what you like in the bedroom uh, because we are all freaking different. And it's super important to feel confident in our differentialities, right? So it's a great way to, to learn about your erogenous zones is to touch your own body. And this is something else that I really want to drive home tonight is that self-pleasure is so important for you, for you to understand your body, for you to understand what you like, you dislike, what your hard no's are, what your yeses, what your maybes are, right? So please uh, explore yourself. And, and you can do that by lightly touching your body. It doesn't need to be in a sexual way or like rubbing moisturizer into your body and seeing how that feels in different areas, like behind your knees or in under your arms, you know, like I'm going to talk about different types of orgasms later. I only talk about the orgasms that I've actually achieved and experienced, but there are apparently a lot of other orgasms that a woman can experience including, you know, eargasms or toegasms. So, you know, this is what I'm saying is that we are so different in our wiring and how we're wired to sex, love and pleasure. So the next diagram here is the, a woman's vulva. So a lot of people get, uh, I think, a little confused between vulva and vagina or actually have no um, understanding of what a vulva is. So everything on the outside of a woman's sex center is her vulva. There's actually no word that encapsulates everything from a outside, inside, and fertility of a woman's like reproductive system, right? 
So we have a vulva which sits externally, and then we have the vagina, and then we have you know our reproductive system like our fallopian tubes and all those things, and uterus and all the rest of it. So on the outside here, we have from our pubic bone down to our anus is our vulva, and that encapsulates the major and minor labia. So what I want to say here is that we have a lot of nerve endings that run from the bottom of our brain, down our spine, around our butt, past our anus, and up to the front of our, um, our mons pubis or our pubis bone. So there are so many nerve endings here. There's, it's, it, there's such pleasure here. It's so sensitive here. It really will help if you explore yourself and explore the difference between your major labia to your minor labia. Explore the difference between your clitoris and the opening of your vagina, right? What I do want to point out here is between the bottom part of the opening of your vagina and your anus is called the perineum, which is that skin. This is also has a lot of nerve endings and is quite pleasurable when... Um, when uh, touched or licked or you know, played with. This part of the woman's body also is the part that is cut when a woman has an episiotomy during birth. So I just really want you to be educated around how much pleasure wiring we have here. And if a doctor goes to give you an episiotomy, what he is basically severing is a lot of nerve endings, all right? So um, what else can I say here? Um, we also have uh, a great deal of nerve endings that start from our um, pubic bone and actually disperse to different um, parts of our sex center. So go to our vagina walls, our G-spot, our cervix, our clitoris. So this is why women can be so sexually wired differently. Okay, so what one person likes, and sorry, it also goes to our anus. So what one woman will like sexually, another woman may completely hate and, and find really painful. So this is why it's really important to know your own sexual wiring. And uh, like I said to the group just before, like if you um, have never, just for example, you've never tried anal sex and you're a little bit curious around it, I always encourage you to try it on yourself first, whether it is with a finger or you know a smaller toy. You then create that safety and trust within yourself. So then when you go and you do it with your partner, you know how to tell them what you like, what you don't like, how, you know, soft or how slow or when to take a pause, um, you know, so you can breathe, so you can relax. Does that make sense? So basically you are the master of your body and it's up to you to know um, what you like and how you like it. So then you can communicate that to your partner in the bedroom. I say to a lot of my couples that good sex starts outside of the bedroom. It starts with the conversations that you have about your sex, what you like, about your sexual history, um, your sexual health, all that kind of stuff that starts outside of the bedroom creates a level of safety for um, within the bedroom. And that's when you get vulnerable, you, know, you, you, you become naked. Sex is such a vulnerable act to uh, enter into with someone. So becoming uh, naked and an opening for women you know we're opening up our, basically our soul like our womb is said to be a second brain for us you know we're so intuitive um, uh, so having that level of trust and safety within ourselves uh, will go a long way to the amount of pleasure that you experience in the bedroom so the next diagram here I've got is um a drawing of the clitoris. So um, I don't know if any of you know, but uh, in Africa, I, I think it still happens, um, little girls were taken out into the paddocks and they were circumcised. So they were cut between their legs and then sewed up by their mothers. So then A, they wouldn't find sex pleasurable and B, they would be virgin on um, their wedding night. Um, so doctors went over and had to, um, like, this is obviously super traumatic. Um, some girls bled out and um, it's like they mutilated um, their private parts, their genitals. So it's quite horrible um, to, um, to think of. 
um, and doctors went over there to um, help stitch these these little girls and these young women back together, back up, um, and fix their their the clitoris and their vaginas. And the one of the doctors um, discovered. So this is only like maybe how old am I? I think this doctor discovered it in the eighties, and I'm yeah thirty six. So yeah, maybe the last thirty years. Uh, it's only been discovered that the clitoris is actually a wishbone gland. It's not just the um, the hood that sits outside of the body. It's actually this wishbone gland that um, runs down either side of the vaginal wall. So if you can have a look at the, the diagram here, you've got the gland's clitoris, um, which it will be the little um, knob or pleasure point or hood or um, whatever you like to call it that will sit externally to you. And then behind that, you've got the crus of, uh, the crus of clitoris. So that's the gland that runs on either side of the um, vagina, of our vaginas. So this next, um, this next diagram is just a side on view um, of a woman and just really what I wanted to point out here, which is kind of a bone of contention between people like scientists and doctors and uh, people who uh, work as sexologists and sex coaches and, and orgasm specialists. Um, uh, the... Um, is the, the G spot of a woman, and that can be found a knuckle deep when you insert your fingers within into your vagina, and then um, kind of like curl them a little bit. You'll find a little a ledge, uh, like a skin that is probably a little bit more smoother than the rest of uh, your vaginal walls, um, which are a little bit more bumpy. So that's your uh, G spot, and behind your G spot is your um, prostate. And so when you um, stimulate the G-spot, you can um, ejaculate from your urethra. And I'll explain a little bit more about um, female ejaculation a little bit later. But I just really wanted to point out on a sideway view um, that we have so many different pleasure points all over our body, but then even in our sex center, we're so diffused, right? So um, like the female body is just built for pleasure. You know, the, the clitoris, the only purpose the clitoris has is to provide us pleasure. Like guys don't have something on their body where the only purpose of it is to provide pleasure. You know, their their penis is uh, to pee out of as well. So um, this is why it's, it's, it's so fascinating the more that I've um, read and researched about, uh, I guess, sex through the ages. You know, I love Charles Darwin. Like, I love him. I love him for, you know, the, the Galapagos Islands and all the, the, the birds and, and all that kind of stuff. But he wrote the book Descent of Man. And in the book, he um, stated that women are less uh, sexual than men. And I think we've been running with that kind of knowledge for the last 300 years. And it's just not the case. Like, there are research uh, that's been done around women and our arousal and men and their arousal and women do get aroused off such a plethora and it's such an expansive variety of visual things where men, um, depending on their sexual orientation, will only get aroused off certain things. So we are funny little devils and that's okay. And we need to own that, right? So let's talk about female orgasm. So women in general, and this is very general and take up to 40 minutes to reach orgasmic pleasure whilst men take up to seven minutes. So you can see the disparity, right? Research suggests that 30% um, of women cannot reach orgasm. However, if these women know or knew how they were wired sexually, I believe that we would have, be, we would have more women orgasming in the world. Um, so there are five different types of orgasms a woman can achieve. So clitoral, vaginal, or G-spot, cervical, anus, and all body. So the clitoral orgasm. The clit is most likely the easiest, more frequent type of orgasm that can be reached during foreplay or penetrative sex, mainly from the women being on top, allowing extra stimulation on her clitoris while being penetrated. This type of orgasm is explosive in nature. So her vocalization to her moans can become extremely loud depending on the woman. 
The clitoris has up to 8,000 nerve endings and isn't just the bulb we see. The clitoris has a wishbone shaped gland that feed down the sides of the vagina. The clitoris, its entire purpose on a woman is to give pleasure and acts as a reset button for her moods and hormones. Um, so I've got this little picture here um, of Megan from when Harry met Sally and that, you know, amazing, so well-known scene where she fakes an orgasm, but that is pretty much how a clitoral orgasm does happen. It's very explosive. It's that throw the head back, you know, toe, curl your toes, like your archer back type of orgasm. And you can be very, um, very loud when you do it. So the vaginal G-spot orgasm. So the G-spot yeah, so it's the Grafenberg spot, which is a German um, doctor who, who uh, discovered it, is situated just inside the vaginal opening, usually a knuckle deep. The surface area has a different texture to the rest of the, of the vaginal walls and when stimulated, female ejaculation can occur. Stimulating the G-spot can be achieved through applying two finger pressure or using uh, toys. Depending on the woman, to achieve orgasm, more time will need to be dedicated on the stimulation of the gym spot. So two things I want to say here is, um, A, I have a beautiful toy that can help you with stimulating your gym spot, and it's from Honor Lifestyle. If you follow me on social media, you may have actually seen me promote their stuff. I am an ambassador for their pleasure range. Um, it, they're gorgeous. They're natural. Um, they're certified. They're amazing women who uh, are designing pleasure toys uh, for women like us to experience um, not only just pleasure in one part of our body, but like this particular toy that I use is the Raven Wave. I pleasure. I, I I experience multiple pleasure points, so my um, cervix and my G spot at the same time, which is amazing, as you can appreciate. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, so a question that I got with the group that were actually live, um, the, the young woman said and asked a question around, um, when she's stimulating her G spot, um, she can feel like she needs to pee and she just wants to know if that's normal. And I said, yes, absolutely normal. When you stimulate your G spot, you may feel like you want to pee and that may make you, uh, want to pull back and stop stimulating. Um, and that's why a lot of women, A, don't experience ejaculation. Um, that feeling of wanting to pee is completely normal. And I don't want to say like push through it, but breathe through it. And, you know, on the other side of that is an ejaculation. Um, equally, I also just want to say, and I'm, I, I think I talked to it in the third point, is that um, you probably have already ejaculated, but when we look at porn, um, you know, it's very dramatic and it's very exaggerated. It's like, you know, the pee, it's like a freaking gush, like it's like a, a waterfall. Um, and all I want to say is that sometimes like the woman will just have excess amount of fluid. And that's what I do when I squirt is just have excess amounts of liquid. I don't, you know, shoot something across the roof. <laughs> so... <laughs> I just want you to be aware of that. There is a beautiful book that you can read um, about female ejaculation and the G-spot uh, by uh, Deborah Sundahl. And um, it explains a lot of stuff in there. And she even, I think she's American. And I think uh, she held um, workshops, maybe not now during COVID, but pre-COVID um, workshops uh, and encouraged women to bring mirrors and then that actually see their G-spot. So, um, yeah, the third point here is squirting or female ejaculation is released by the urethra, although it is not urine. A woman has her own prostate gland that releases liquid when stimulated. It is important to know that women will not squirt like porn stars do in porn movies. They are over-exaggerated. While some women will gush, many women's ejaculation will be just an increased amount of fluid. So, um, yeah. Okay, cervical orgasms. These are so delicious. Cervical orgasms are long and voluptuous in nature. They are different to the clitoral orgasms and require the head of the penis or dildo to gently massage the women's cervix. So this is where a man's strokes um, or a woman's strokes, if she's using a strap on, um, when you slow them down and become very uh, intentional and kind of quite nourishing with 
the stroking is where you can really open up the cervix to a great amount of pleasure. Um, Jack hammering your way through lovemaking is going to hurt the cervix and it's really not pleasurable for a woman. So um, what and how I've achieved a cervical orgasm is this can be best achieved when she is laying down on her stomach. This is how I've achieved it. Her pelvis is propped up um, by a pillow and sometimes one leg is cocked to the side and to her slowly and gently. So this particular uh, angle for me worked beautifully. Um, and also I'm assuming it was the size of his penis as well, which um, added um, that extra stimulation. We just kind of like really fit perfectly. Uh, what I want to encourage is that everyone is different and just try different positions. But I think the, the biggest thing here to remember is that, you know, going softly, going gently and, and massaging up against the cervical, the cervix instead of like pounding it is going to uh, relax you and, and bring you to pleasure more than, um, you know, pounding away. Um, anus orgasm. So nerve endings run from the base of a woman's brain down her back, like I explained before, and around her anus. This makes a woman's anus a very sensitive area for sexual stimulation. Also makes a man's anus very, very uh, wide for sexual stimulation. Some men are very, very um, scared of the anus, but there's a lot of pleasure there for a guy. As I mentioned previously, women are all wired differently for sex and pleasure. And so some women will absolutely love anal play and others will not. And this is the thing, and I think I mentioned this before, it's so important to understand that you are wired completely different. So talking to your girlfriend about sex and how she uh, reaches orgasm and how often they have sex and blah, 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 can really play on your mind because you're thinking that you there's something wrong with you or that you're broken because you can't reach a certain style of pleasure. We are all different. So what you like, you know, someone else may not like, you know, you may just have that one friend who can and enjoys every style, you know, good for her, but that doesn't mean that you're any less um, sexual or wired or there's anything wrong with you, okay? Maybe she can't get multiple orgasms and you can. The key to any anal play is to start slow, use lube, over-communicate and let the woman be the guide, so... So this is why I always say to you to um, try things out on yourself first before going and doing it with another person. So you are the guide, you're the master of your body. You know what's right and what um, will work. <coughs> Sorry. Um, ooh. <coughs> All body orgasms. This is achieved through meditation and breath work. The energy is brought up the body from the sex centers and transmuted around the body. Um, I've achieved um, all body orgasms. It's beautiful. It's a practice though. It's a practice that requires dedication. Um, I don't kind of shout it from the rooftops because I don't want to glamorize. Like I have been taught Tantra. Um, I practice Tantra. I live a Tantric life, but I don't, um, I guess, you know, promote that I'm a tantra practitioner or anything like that because I think there's a lot of glamour in the Western society and Western civilization around tantra and you know hours of sex and hours of orgasms. Um, but let's be real, like you can achieve these kind of things, but you you want to want to do it. You can't just go to a two day workshop and like boom, you know, you're having multiple, multiple, multiple orgasms. Like you've got to work up to it like anything else. If you do want to work up to it, you do want to learn. I am here for you. I can teach you. Uh, but this is a beautiful way of transmuting your energy around your body. Sex energy, um, orgasmic energy is very healing energy. It's great for manifesting. It's uh, great to connect to the divine. It's great to keep in your body and use for creativity, for productivity in your business or day-to-day -day life. Like it's super amazing when a man can, um, uh, can separate his orgasms from his ejaculation. It's very powerful uh, for him and for his relationship because he's not a slave to his cock anymore you know, he can pick and choose, which is amazing for his woman who can take a little bit longer to warm up to, um, to pleasure. So yeah, that's just what I want to say about that. 
Female ejaculation. So female ejaculation um, has been celebrated and worshipped in ancient cultures in Eastern um, society. Um, it's said to assist with fertility. Female ejection, ejaculation, sorry, <laughs> the ejection is not urine. Um, even though it does come out of the urethra and there is a little bit of urine, it is not primarily urine. The G spot and um, female prostate is a knuckle deep inside the vagina. So, kind of where I have um, put that little green dot, that's where you will find it. And every woman has the capacity to experience ejaculation. Uh, so, it just requires, you know, playing around, not getting too caught up in it, um, and just enjoying the sensations and the pleasure. And um, you will experience it for sure. Like, I experienced, I tried to give it to myself by watching YouTube um, videos and all I got was a sore arm. And then I had two men in quick succession, I think over a couple of months, um, make me square. And I have no idea what they did. And then I, with my honor lifestyle um, pleasure toy, I made myself squirt. So it, um, yeah, it's it's something that we can work up to. Please don't shame yourself if you're wanting to do it and you can't yet. Um, maybe you just require a lot more relaxation. Maybe your pelvic floor needs to tighten or needs to relax a lot more because that can play into um, into uh, its um, into whether you ejaculate. So female ejaculation can be a dribble, a squirt, or a gush. Chances are you have ejaculated and you didn't know. Women can renegade their ejaculate, meaning it goes backwards into their bladder. Because it's kind of like, it's like they get scared and then like, oh fuck, like I don't want to ejaculate. And then they stuff it back in, which is not, uh, not great, not healthy. Due to society's views on ejaculation, like many things to do with female sexuality, it can carry guilt, shame, and be repressed. So that's also why women can renegade um, their ejaculate because some women, and, you know, I've been with guys who have said that, oh, yeah, my, you know, one of my first partners, she used to ejaculate all the time, like, and, like, squirt, like, you know, they had to put towels down all the time. And so there can be a level of shame or guilt that can come with that because, you know, like, I'm making too much mess or whatever, whatever, or um, all I want to say is that there is no place for shame or guilt when it comes to sex. You are perfect the way that you are and the way that you experience pleasure is perfect. And if someone starts to shame you for the way that you experience pleasure, like that person is not for you. So what I want to say is like, you know, when you orgasm, like, we kind of lose control and when you experience immense amount of bliss and pleasure you know your eyes can roll back in your head you can like make the weirdest facials and if someone's going to shame you for the way that you look they're not your person you know they they need to grow up um and there's no place for you to to shame yourself for the way that you look or feel or the way that you experience experience pleasure I'm drinking red wine while we talk about this. So female orgasm and ejaculation. So main reasons why women do not or cannot reach orgasms or ejaculate. Sex has historically been geared towards the men's pleasure only. And so once the men ejaculate, sex ends, leaving women unsatisfied if they have not reached orgasm either. She does not know how to bring herself to an orgasmic pleasure and so cannot show men what she likes or women what she likes. We get stuck in our heads and overthink too much. So common thoughts are, am I taking too long? Is he bored? Do I smell? Do I taste nice? Thoughts about your body image, like, oh my God, can you see my butthole? And thoughts about chores and other responsibilities, right? None of that kind of stuff is going to help with you orgasming or ejaculating. Sex is a very body 
it's embodied, right? We have to be in our body to uh, experience great sex. Like we can't be thinking about what's going on outside in the other world. Like it's, it's, it's such a beautiful act that you do either with yourself or with your partner and being present is so important when you are having sex with uh, your partner or enjoying lovemaking. So like getting into your body, focusing on the sensations that you feel when you are making love, um, asking for a break if you do realize that your mind has gone off and uh you know having no shame in in slowing things down in and taking a break in taking and not a break like okay like let's take five like go do your emails but you know take a break stop penetrative sex and go back to foreplay or just lay there cuddling or eye gaze with each other which is so vulnerable so if you think sex is so vulnerable in its act and then you add eye gazing on top of that you've got two powerful very vulnerable um intimate uh exercises here that you're um compounding on top of each other like that creates a, an immense amount of connection between two people so um what else could you do um you know, get back into your breath um breathe into your body so you can really uh slow down your stroke slow down your breathing slow down uh, your movements you know so you can really feel every last little movement that's happening every last little um sensation penetration yeah so um getting stuck in your head is the number one reason that a lot of clients come to me and they express that they can't orgasm and when we unpack it they are very stuck in their head so other reasons is that we feel shame and embarrassment about being naked with our legs open. And this is something that I had to work on. I, whilst I didn't grow up in a really religious family, I, I, I went to Catholic schools. So I remember feeling a bit of shame, self-pleasuring and opening my legs. And I kind of, yeah, I felt, I felt naughty. So I had to like you know, nip that in the butt. <laughs> uh, our religious views on sex and pleasure impact our ability to relax. Stress can, um, you know, hinder it. Medical reasons can also trauma and abuse. And our pelvic floor muscle is either too tight or too loose. So let's just talk about feminine energy for a moment. I think it's really important for us to understand feminine energy. So feminine energy is a heart energy. So um, from a tantric perspective, um, and so when I talk about feminine energy, we all have feminine energy. So men and women have feminine energy within them. Men and women have masculine energy within them. Um, what I'm talking from this energy is from a feminine female point of view, the female is connected with her heart where the male is more connected with his genitals. So a female's positive pole is her heart a male's positive pole is his cock. That's why you even go for your partner's cock or a guy's cock and it'll get hard and you'll get excited and boom, like, you know, game on. Whereas if a man went for a woman, and this is not all women, this is just generalized, but, you know, greater percentage. Uh, if, go, if a guy goes for a woman's genitals, she'll most likely like slap it away and be like, ew, like get away from me. <laughs> You know, because she wants him to connect with her heart first because her heart is her positive pole. So it's a yin energy, feminine energy. So it's a being energy. So we don't really need to do anything when we're in our feminine. It's a creative energy. It's receptive. If you think about a female's body, a female's body is um, flowy. It undulates. It's um, boundless. And we have our vagina where we receive the penis through the, through our um, into our vagina so the feminine energy is a receptive energy it's a receiving energy so to receive sit and receive is is a very um base feminine energy so anytime you go and get a massage and sit and receive that um healing 
you're in your feminine. Uh, I went and had sound healing the other week where I just lay there for an hour and a half, super feminine. Um, yeah, anytime that you just lay back and receive, um, you're in your fem, and it's beautiful. So the feminine energy is um, nurturing, it's emotional, it's chaotic. Uh, it's all about the journey. So it's not about the destination. The destination, the masculine energy is very worried about the destination. So the feminine is very much about the journey. And this is why when I um, have clients who um, want to increase their sexual pleasure in their relationship, I get them to concentrate on the journey of sexual pleasure, not just the destination, okay? So then you're bringing in actually into the bedroom, both yin and yang. So the destination of having an orgasm, amazing, great, but don't fixate on that. Enjoy the journey. So then you're not always having 10 minute sex, um, but your sex also then also isn't always lasting hours and hours and hours. So, you know, you get to expand the amount of pleasure that you experience in your, um, in your relationship right in the bedroom. Um, it's a flowy energy, like I said, it's boundless, it has a cool temperature, it's agreeable, brings light and beauty into the world and brings balance back to the masculine energy. Um, so it's so important to have both your masculine and your feminine developed. So what I actually want to talk to is the emotional chaotic side of the feminine. A lot of people kind of shy away from this and go, oh my God, like, you know, kind of see it as a negative and all I can say is that anyone who doesn't and cannot stand uh, whilst the feminine in someone gets chaotic cannot stand in their own solidarity and hold space for that does not have their own feminine developed within them okay so uh, you could be in a relationship with um, someone and uh, like a masculine energy and you get quite overly emotional and you get a bit chaotic. Um, if that masculine doesn't uh, hold space for you while you connect to your wild emotions and say something like, oh God, you're crazy. Oh God, I can't handle you. Come back when you're normal. Um, and like runs away to their man cave or goes out with their boys or whatever. That A, is not helping the situation whatsoever, but also B, is a telltale sign that their inner feminine is not um, developed. So I had a partner that every time I cried, he just ignored me. <laughs> yeah, super, super healed feminine within him. And I was like, oh my God, like, and I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel safe to be able to connect and be my true self and be my vulnerable self with him. So you could imagine how much that actually played out in our relationship and played out in our sex life. It's like, I didn't want to have sex with you. Like, you can't hold my emotions. I don't want to get vulnerable with you. And the reason why the feminine needs the masculine to hold space is because we want to know that we're safe with the masculine. We want to know that in our most vulnerable moment, which is childbirth, we are going to be safe. Um, and that's that's purely and primarily the only reason. So uh, it's, it's very important to uh, understand both masculine and feminine energy and bring them in in balanced perspective into your life. Affirmations. So here's some beautiful affirmations that maybe you can write down or uh, and, and take into your life is that my body is divinely created and it is, it's created from source energy. The same energy that creates worlds, it's uh, your body is divine. I am loving, sexy, worthy, just as I am. My physique is perfect just as it is. I love my curves. Uh, I love the curve of my hips and butt. I love the softness of my stomach. I am woman, I am goddess. My body has so much love to give. My pussy is beautiful and sacred. And you can obviously change up those words, depending if you resonate with the word pussy or not. I obviously do. Um, okay. So some homework for you. Self-pleasure, self-pleasure, self-pleasure. <laughs> Have fun with this. Explore your body. It's your body. It's your home. And she's divine and gorgeous. Like, get comfortable with your uh with yourself and explore find your g-spot you know play around uh explore your entire body for pleasure spots you never knew you had grab a mirror 
And if you feel comfortable, um, you can maybe please yourself in front of the mirror and watch your body change. So when you um, uh, start to please yourself, your clitoris will engorge, your skin color will change, and your vulva swells because it has more blood down there and because it's um, getting um, stimulated. And if you don't feel like you want to please in front of the mirror, that's completely fine, but like, check her out. She's yours. Check out your vagina, your clitoris, see what she looks like, see what, you know, it's funny, like the more that I have done these, the more I have actually felt comfortable with opening my legs. And I know that, um, and I'm thinking about someone in particular, like I would lay back on the bed and I'd open my legs and I'd literally think in my mind, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> and that's not from an egotistical standpoint. It's like, I fucking love myself. I love my pussy and you're fucking welcome. Like you're being invited right now. So that's kind of, I guess, the big, big pussy energy that, you know, we should all have. And have fun. Have fun with your exploration. Have fun with your body. Have fun with self-pleasure. Um, you know, knowledge is power, but also what you do with that knowledge um, is even more powerful. So use tonight as a baseline of, um, you know, knowledge, but then also permission to enjoy yourself. So I just want to talk to you now also about the Pleasure Portal, which is the beautiful container that um, I have recently opened for women only. It's a sacred container for um, any woman to begin or solidify her journey. I believe women who are connected deeply with who they are, are confident in themselves, move through life differently. Um, I know this because this is me. So I have felt um, shame around my sexuality. I have felt guilt around my sexuality. I have felt naughty and dirty for opening my legs. I haven't connected to my period. Um, I felt disconnected from my body. I found it really hard to find my voice and, and share my truth. And so everything that I have worked so hard on to create within myself, I've put into this pleasure portal for more women to have those um, lessons and and that gold, that wisdom that that I have, but also that lies within you, lies within your womb. So it's a safe place for you to cultivate a deeper understanding of what it means to be a woman in the world. Connect with your cycle, use your energy and hormone fluctuations to your benefit. Connect with your breath, your womb, your femininity, your power, your voice. As Beyonce once sung, who run the world? Girls, we definitely do. And more women who are connected to their sovereignty, to their power, uh, the better the world is going to be. Look what's happening the world over. Like we've got Jacinta in New Zealand and Camilla is just, Camilla? Is that her name? Camilla Harris? Um, just joined the, the White House. Like that is, that is massive for America. And, you know, we only need one and now we're going to have, you know, women following suit. And that's, you know, so powerful, so powerful. Um, when a woman is, I've, I've spelled that wrong, sorry, but when a woman is deeply content, confident, and in love with all that she is, her radiance is a ripple effect out into her world, in and outside of the home. So women who are deeply connected with themselves, you know, will change the world and will move through the world differently and speak differently and, and will approach different uh, things differently and will lead with their heart. And instead of doing things because they uh, feel obligated to, you'll step outside and really um, follow your, your dreams, your passion, and um, you'll be what, you, what the world needs. So what's included is a community of uh, like-minded queens. So you get instant access to a private Facebook group of women stepping into their power. You join a community of beautiful women on the same journey as yourself. Uh, there's weekly live training. So each Tuesday at 1 p.m. I will go live on a topic. Training stays in the group so you can catch the replay. So it's there forever. I also uh, provide worksheets, so additional resources to help with trainings and prompts. Um, so journal prompts and um, to put more thought um, after the training. There'll be live Q&A sessions with myself. And what I'm really excited about is interviews with industry leaders. So I'll invite both men and women who work in the space of sacred sexuality, empowerment and relationships into the space. And I've already got one man and one woman 
uh, one man, he worked with uh, women um, in relationship coaching. And I've got one woman who um, is a libido specialist. So she'll talk all about sexuality, eroticism, and um, orgasms, which is super juicy. And I've also got a couple that are going to come into the space as well. And this couple uh, are a beautiful couple who are connected and and dedicated to their own development individually but then also bringing that into their sacred container of relationship and I really think it would be amazing for them to share their journey with you and how you know when they both first met each other they um, either both weren't on the journey or one of them wasn't so it's like what's inspired each of them to really go deep and work on their own past stuff so they're bringing their best self to their relationship. So I really am um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about, uh, about the interviews. So the investment options or option <laughs> is a monthly investment of $47 a month. Um, I've made it a, a reasonable price because I just believe that more women um, are worthy of this um, information and, and learnings and teachings and guidance. And I just want to create a really great container of women who are on the journey to um, their own sovereignty and power. So if that um, is you and you feel called, um, please, by all means, reach out to me and send me a reply of the, the email that you've received this training um, through. And we can have a bit of a chat and um, get you in the group. So thanks so much for coming and um, I'll see you all soon. Much love. Bye.